Thank you. I was asked to talk to you about how to win in business. I think it's a good subject for you to think about because I believe business in America is in a crisis situation today. All you have to do is read the paper and, and every month see uh, our trade deficit. And it's just a very depressing uh, situation. And uh, to speak to you about how to win in business, there's a lot of obvious things I could talk about. You first have to find a need. You've got to fill a need for a consumer out there. You've got to have a market. You've got to have somebody to sell uh, your product or your service to. You've got to, if you really want to get big and win big, you've got to have a uniqueness. There's got to be something a little bit different from you than all the competition out there. But by far the most important thing you've got to have to win in business in these United States today is a very unique kind of mental toughness. I believe the difference in winning and losing in the free enterprise system is so small, it's almost too scared to talk about. You can do 99% of the things right in business, and yet if you don't possess what I call that winning edge, that mental toughness, folks, it's impossible to win. I believe the thinking in corporate America has been screwed up over these last 20 or 25 years, and I believe this screwed up kind of thinking started in our big liberal universities today. I believe a college degree in business for most universities today is not worth the papers written on. I just had a son graduate from the University of Georgia uh, a few months ago. The reason I think that is because most of these professors in most of these universities today haven't got enough common sense to get in out of the rain. They don't have any idea what it takes to win out there in the real world. They deal in a bunch of theory. Uh, these people are try have tried to fill up corporate America with this kind of thinking. These are the special people. If you're born rich, if you're born on the right side of the track, they rule you the privileged class in America. If you're born poor from an average, ordinary background like I came from, they, they, they say you're supposed to give up all your big dreams and all your big ambitions and all your big hope. If you have, have a high IQ, they rule you brilliant. If you have an average IQ like me, they say you ought to drive a truck or be a janitor. Well, bull. That, 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 that ain't the way. That ain't the way it is, and that ain't the way it ever was. They ain't nobody ever designed a test, nor will they design a test that can measure the heart of a man or a woman. The things that the things that are unique to winning in business in America today are not outside artificial things like IQs, college board scores, college degrees, and stuff like that. The key to winning in these United States is what's inside a person. It's your integrity, it's your people abilities, it's your character. I believe in developing this winning edge. I've got 10 or 12 points that I won't be able to go over with you tonight, but let me just give you a flavor of what I think you've got to do to succeed in these United States. Number one, you've got to get excited. Folks, I don't believe anybody will ever tell you anything more important than this in winning in these United States. Ninety plus percent of winning in anything you try to do in America today, you've got to be excited. People in America won't follow or believe in a negative, dull, disillusioned, frustrated dad gum crybaby. People want people that are positive and excited and enthusiastic and tough. The greatest lesson, the greatest definition I ever heard. I thought about this 10 million times when I wanted to quit along the way of a winner. This guy said almost everybody in America can stay excited for two or three months. A few people can stay excited for two or three years. But a winner will stay excited for 30 years or ever how long it takes to win. Another key to building this winning edge and this mental toughness is you've got to become a dreamer again. You know, I'm a Methodist and we just changed ministers a few weeks ago and our new minister came in and, and, and the uh, church was just packed. And the first thing he said, he says, well, it looks like everybody came out to see the monkey perform. And the second, the second thing out of his mouth, he said, for a church to be a great church, you've got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, you're dead. And boy, I sat up and I said, man, me and this guy are going to get along good because he knows what he's talking about. See, folks, I believe in order to win, you've got to feel good about yourself. I, 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 when I was coaching football for seven years back in Georgia, and I had a paddle in my coaching office that was about this thick and this long. And in the fat end, I had little holes bored in it so you could really get some speed and blister the little butt, you know, when they misbehaved. And, and I had a rule on my football team that if any kid said, I can't, 
If any football player heard, heard one of my football players said I can, he got to bring him in the coach's office and give him three legs. And it took me about a month to get all that thinking out of my players every year, you know. And I'd, I'd have football players knock on my door at recess and at lunch and after school. And he said, Coach, he said it. Coach, he said it. And I'd make that kid bend over and I'd give that other kid the board. He'd bust him three times. And folks... It didn't take long. You couldn't create a word game to, to get one of my, my kids to say, I can't. Bring it home a little bit more personal. When April and Little Art were, were just this little and could understand words, every time they said, I can't, I made them do three push-ups. Folks, there ain't nothing you can't do in America if you want to bad enough. Another key in building this winning edge is, folks, you've got to stand for something. People in America, the good people in America, are fed up with here with these dadgum fence sitters and mealy mouths. Uh, corporate America has an especially black eye uh, in business today. Most people in America think you can't find a company. They think you can't find a salesperson that will tell you like it is and stand behind the word. They think these companies will sell anything, say anything, just to make a sale, just to make a profit. Well, you know what? Folks, if you want to win in the free enterprise system in America today, you've got to stand for something. And another, and another point. Thank you. Is you uh, it, it, yes, you're going to be controversial. Folks, if you want to win in these United States today, just get ready. You're going to be controversial. Uh, the only way not to be controversial is to be average and ordinary. They just call me anything but, but average and ordinary. Now, I know some of you might say, well, well, you know, I don't think I like Art Williams. He, you know, he sounds like an old tough butt to me. Well, folks, I'm telling you, you can be good and tough at the same time. I, I bet nobody's ever talked to a religious broadcaster like that. <laughs> another key, another key to developing this winning, this winning attitude that will give you a chance to do something great in American business is, folks, you've got to make a total commitment to what you're about. Do you know almost the American people have lost their toughness? They've lost their ability to make a commitment. See, folks, in trying to win in business, you're just going to have so many false starts. You think you get it going time after time, and you just get knocked back to ground zero. And it's your ability to compete, to pick yourself up off the bat one more time, to go for it one more time, that's going to determine success or failure. You know, we've got a divorce rate in America some 50% right now. You, you know, it just seems like that people that go in business today, they have an attitude, well, I'm going to stick my toe in it. If I start making all this money, get all these promotions, then I'll, I'll see this thing through. Well, folks, that's not the way it works. The first step to winning in business in America today is you've got to make a total commitment. Total commitment gives you that little extra ounce of courage. You need to fight back through the tough times. Winning in business demands the same kind of commitment that winning in marriage demands. You know, I fell in love with my wife in the second grade. Only girlfriend I ever had. We ran off and got married our freshman year. Had both of our children before we, we left college. We're true business partners in marriage. We go everywhere together. I spend more time with her. Been married to her 26 years. Now i got two grandbabies. Love her more today than I ever have. But I don't like her all the time. There's a, bunch of, there's a bunch of times every day that I don't like her. He, he, you know, uh, I, I'm a nut about brushing my teeth. You know, if I can get the toothbrush, I'll brush my teeth uh, three or four, five, six times uh, a day. And, and Angela's always forgetting everything, you know. And she always leaves the cap off the toothpaste, you know. And when I go in there to brush my teeth, the cap's off. It's got that hard little crust around the edge. You know, it just burns me more than I can tell you, you know. And, and, I, and I, get on, uh, I get on Angela's nerves about a lot of things. You know, we were having uh, dinner last week. And every time we get through, Angela kicks me under the table, you know, and gets me back in my room and says, Arn, you, you ain't got no class. You, you know, I wish, uh, I wish, uh, I wish, Arch, you could learn to eat with your mouth closed, you know. <laughs> but see, folks, if you want to win in business, everything's not going to work out like you want it to, but you've got to be committed. I want to have great kids. I want to have a wonderful relationship. I want to have tremendous uh, grandbabies. 